Hello everyone, Attack Power here with Game 2 between Gina Dong and Ghost Dragon in the August Monthly Tournament. Let's dive right in here to Tali in Hantala. And on the left, in the red, we have Gina Dong playing Group Bazoogly on Balanced Income. And on the right, in the blue, we have Ghost Dragon playing 78th Sturm on Balanced Income. So a glorious balanced on balanced match. No player with an advantage Remember, 50-minute time limits in this ma uh, this month was random divisions. Each player got, like, four random divisions and could pick one. But let's dive in here on the left. Group Bazoogly, a division we don't see very often. I would probably put it uh, high, a C-tier division. You know, it's not. It, it's definitely playable, and it has its moments. Uh, every division these days can can get by in some way, uh, but certainly not, you know, certainly not an A-tier or anything like that. Uh, the Recon tab, solid. You get T-70s and Resvedkas. Resvedkas are great for the Bazookas. And T-70s, honestly, like, really overperform uh, with their APCR and stuff. So definitely good options there. I'm not sure what else is in there. To be honest, I don't I don't play this division, really. Uh, Infantry-wise, though, you get a nice mix of Russian infantry. You get two cards of Strafniki, which is really what, like, kind of makes this infantry tab good. Uh, if it weren't for that, this would be a, a very normal and underwhelming Soviet infantry tab. You got the usual Tanko, Strelki, Strelki SVTs. He's bringing his DPs and C phase. I think that's a good idea. You get a lot of them then uh, to work with. And with both players on balance, it's going to be grindy. Uh, your tank tab is unique because you do have some Axis armor here with the Tiger. And then just lots of T-34s as well. So... And inter you know, nothing spectacular, but you do have some heavy armor to work with, just not super heavy stuff. Your support tab, actually really good. You get the usual Russian options with the Maxims and SG-43s, and uh, you also get then the OB-25, one of the best infantry guns in the game. And then you also get a card of SU-122s, which is really nice to have some of that 2K long range. Uh, AT tab, mm, underwhelming, just 45 mil SU-76 and ZIS-3. I, I don't think there are other options. If there was, I, I'm sure he would be taking a ZIS-2 or something if he could. Uh, AA tab is, is fine. You get 37 mils and M15s. Uh, both of them are, you know, very average, nothing blowing your mind. Uh, RD tab, it's not amazing. I mean, you get SU-76 is very common. Uh, 152 off map, bleh. Uh, you do get Andrusias, which is nice because they're much better than Katushias. Uh, but nothing like spectacular here. Uh, definitely very ammo heavy uh, hungry your air tab pretty solid you get uh, il 2ms which are great very cost efficient bomb very good resilience bombers you get the il 2m cluster bomber and you do get boston so the air tab definitely quite solid no fighters here for him on the other side 78 sherm uh definitely a high b tier division i'd put at this point maybe low a tier uh it's it's always been a solid division i don't know if it's ever been like a spectacular division like s tier or anything like that but it's always been a solid a tier division your recon tab one of the weaknesses of the division although he's got it filled all the way to the the brim here off claire uh t26 is n spet troop which is surprising because that's a one two three cost so that's a lot of points in there uh your infantry tab i mean obviously one of the special parts of this deck all the infantry pretty unique you get the bug lights you get shoots in which are just beefed up Panzergrens, and then you get Sturm Schutzen, which are massive MP44 squads. You also get Bug Light Pioneers, which are extremely good. So just like super high quality infantry. The issue is everything's expensive. Every single unit in this infantry tab is extremely expensive. Your tank tab, Shook 3s, that's fine. Support tab is phenomenal. Lots of 2K with the IG33s, IG18, MG42s. Your AT tab, also phenomenal. You get Naz Horns, Pack 40s, uh, in droves, and then you would also get the Pack 43 if you wanted it. Your AA tab, really good with uh, flak 43s and you normally could take lots of 88s as well your arty tab awesome with tons of nebelwerfers and other heavy arty if you wanted it and finally your re your air tab another weakness of the division but he is bringing those ju uh 188 nuke bombers diving into the game here an early boston recon see if anyone's going super aggressive here no nothing there we do see a push here very common gina zong going for this flag that's a very common push to make he's not trying to get this flag really it's kind of surprising. Usually, I mean, this flag's very easy to grab. I find red side to be much easier than blue side on this map. I don't think it's, like, horribly unfair, but it definitely favors red side. There's a lot more easy flags. Like, pushing over to get this flag is quite easy. IG-18 with the MG-42s. The MG-42 should win with the support of the IG-18. IG-18 finding the max amount in the open. OB-25. I'm not sure what it's looking for. The shoots in, perhaps? No. What's it going at? Oh, it's going... No, it is. What is it going after? The IG-18. Interesting. Okay. This is a very light deployment from Gina Zong. Honestly, I, and it's surprising because this is a very common place to push. This isn't like a surprising attack here. Stug 3, though, is helping out. 
MG42 lost? Wow. Okay. It lost hard, too. Interesting. Uh, nothing down south here. And this is the thing with 70HR. Look how few units he has on the map compared to Bazoogly here. Like, this is just the big issue with 70HR. Everything's so expensive. You can, you oftentimes just get spammed out or overwhelmed just by pure numbers. Because you just, you can't match numerically the number problem. For every one of your shoots and the opponent calls in, like, two of whatever they have. It's very tough. I mean, your stuff is absolutely superior. But... It's rough. IG-18 actually takes out the T-34s. So that's a really helpful kill. And the Stug-3 now looking at the OB-25 and stuff. IG-18 goes down to the SU-122. That's really good kill for Bazoogly. But this is now all in danger. The Stug-3 actually the biggest boy on campus right now. But Gina Zong with a 15-9 currently with these 1-2-3 flags here. Even with, uh, even with Ghost grabbing this flag here. He's actually lost this one too, so it's one, two, three, four flags. But of course, these two are just stretches from this little push here. Problem is that the M2A1 is going to be kind of an issue, although it's in a weird position. Like, he can just drive a shoots in up here, unload, and toss a grenade. Oh, Sturm shoots and goes down to the T70. Ouch. IL 2, bomber in for the IG 18 there. That is dead. Ghost could definitely use some AA here. SU-122 takes a penetration from the Stug-3. Stug-3 is, is doing doing work right now. It's kind of the only reason he's still in this, honestly. M42 coming in. That Stug-3 will kill it. The off clear doing a nice job spotting. It's excellent to see Ghost Dragon bring in Recon along with this, because otherwise this Stug-3 would not be able to do much of anything. T-70 poked his head out and then ran away wisely. I don't think it was going to get that side shot. We see now the M2A1 grabbing tons of territory. This again my issue with half tracks. I just I, I'm. It would be so annoying if they didn't affect the front line, but it's also really annoying that they do affect the front line. 45 mil goes down. Shug three gets a driver killed from the T70 APCR, but the T70 can't put another shot on. Sturm shoots in. Need to catch these tankos out before they can get in, and they do. And the damage. Oh my God! These guys just absolutely decimate when they catch units on the move out of cover. Like it's so much damage. Any other situation, they're very lackluster. But if an opponent, if an enemy is moving and this dude shoots at them and any lack of cover, it is devastating amounts of damage. But they're not great at CQC. Like, don't be fooled. That do not you don't want these guys really fighting in green forests hardcore because they don't actually do very well. And they're expensive. Again, once again, they're just expensive. But if you can catch a unit like he just did, kind of walking out in the open, oh my god, it is, it's a, it's a sight in terms of damage output. It's insane. This Boston Recon's been allowed to just free fly around here. The T, oh my god, the T26 is currently losing out to the M2A1. Like at this rate, the M2A1 will probably like panic it. No, it can't, finally went out of range. That's, that's so much, honestly. M2A1 goes down. That's good. I just like seeing half tracks die. I'll be honest with you. I'm not rooting against Bazooly. I just like seeing half tracks die, especially the 50 cal ones because I just think they're cheese central. Tanko's coming in. Sturm shoots in again. Gonna have a lot of issues with there. He needs to. I mean, he, he's having a hard time to finding a spot there. Nope. Tanko's are gonna get in and they'll absolutely shred these Sturm shoots in. These Sturm shoots in a weird spot because they don't. Re I mean, they have the range to fight this forest, but not over here, of course. Black 43 now coming in. Going out into the open. This is a really ballsy deployment. Any sort of like SU-122 or something here. Absolutely devastate that. IL-2 does get in. Sturm shoots in. Ouch. Taking a big hit there. M2A1 now coming in. Shoots in. Also pinned down. Sturm shoots in. Lose out to the tankos. Although they did more damage than I would have expected them to. They Remember, they are a 13-man squad to start. So he lost twice as many units in that engagement. Glide Pioneer, just chilling here, can easily overrun the Strelke once he decides to go for it. Can finally stop that tick, but Ghost Dragon right now on the strong spot. Doing a nice job of keeping that tick going. He does have a pen to a Nicktoon here, so if this M2A1 gets too aggressive, he will be able to take it out. But no worry about that yet. Act 40 needs to get into a position to help here. Like right here, can cover off the reinforcement route. Now the issue is there's an OB25 here, so that's gonna hurt that's gonna hurt a lot. Sturm shoots in easily overwhelmed, but Glide is now spotted as well, it looks like. No, he's still just shooting at the Sturm shoots and happened to get that. And the Vernictung is gonna get that kill. M2A1 gets a little too aggressive there. He goes down for it. 
So Buglite, Stralky just inches away from seeing each other. We do see a Tiger in now. Stug3 on the run trying to get away from that. Another Flak 43 in. So now finally lock down the air down here. And truthfully, once Xena, like, kind of, like, gets all of this stuff out of here, the fight will basically concentrate like it always does right into this area. I mean, this is where the majority of the fighting takes place. And that's the problem with Tali. Like, I actually like this map. I do think it's pretty fun to play. The issue is this big lake up here cuts off half the map. So all the points are funneled into this, like, three quarters of the map. So really, you're kind of playing on, like, a small map with full points. It, it's, it's very... Eh. It's not great. Like, it does really limit your ability to move around. Pack 40 trying to get in a position to kill off this tiger. That's a good play. The, ti the Pack 40 should be able to do that quite easily, especially if we can find some side armor or something. And at closer range, it should... I mean, this is going to be pretty close range. It should penetrate pretty often. Shook 3 still in a nice spot to stop these if he gets, like, really aggressive. He's not going to get super aggressive, but he should see with the off clear that this is coming. Infantry pushing back in now and should be able to capture this back, although more Strelki and Strafniki coming in. Shug3 does poke forward to try to stop this Strelki from getting into position. It looks like it will have plenty of time to get the shot off. Misses the first one. Strelki unload, but now they're out in the open and the Stug can start doing some damage. Tree overwhelmed. Sturm shoots in and shoots in in. Shoots in are kind of useless at CQC. Sturm shoots in, of course, will do damage, especially against, like, non-CQC units like these. Sturm shoots in trying to swing up to stop these Shrelki. The off need to move or they're going to die. Black 43 going to get in on the action here. Alpha Claire gets spotted. It's going to be a big loss, actually. This recon has been super duper helpful. And now it will be dead. Notice now the Shug 3 stops firing because it can no longer see its target there. Shoots in and stuff are forced off, just kind of overwhelmed by the number of guns here. Strafniki should be able to take out this Panzer T-26 with their PTRD. Glide is coming though, though the cover differential could be quite devastating. I don't know why the T-26 is not turning. It's really kind of weird actually. And it goes down because it was just showing side armor. I mean the Shug 3 could definitely take on this Tiger at this range. It's close enough that it would probably penetrate. And this Strelki gets caught out now and should get absolutely wiped out. Xena Zhong now on the 1311. Capturing what exactly? I don't know. As my daughter would say, I don't know. Oh, no, wait, Gina Zhong is the one who's been on the 1410. What am I talking about? It's Ghost. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Got confused. Player confusion. Nebelwerfer aiming up to hit these infantry. Finding if you're uh, spotted, does need to fall back. Stug 3 continue to do good work. Tiger moved out of position here because if it chilled here, it could still be, like, cutting off the reinforcement routes and stuff. This time the Boston going to fly right over some Flak 43s. Will not last long. Probably will get out. I would think. But maybe not. I mean, it's a one-star Flak. Eh, no, I don't know. They're getting, they might not go down. We'll see. SU-122 goes down. That's a big kill to start there. Ooh, but Pack 40 still takes a big hit. Boston does go down, so a nice kill there. Only one more of those left. And only one more SU-122, actually, as well, because he only had the one card of him. Pack 40 finishes off the T-70. That's a nice kill there, although he's almost dead himself. Might get the Strafniki Komorati. This was very ballsy. Oh, the Stug's just going to do the job for him. Pack 40 does go down, though. Shoots him pinned down by the Maxim. Pack 40 getting wrecked by the OB-25. Not even going to get a shot off here. OB-25s are so freaking good. This unit is just disgusting. 12 rounds a minute. I'm pretty sure the IG-18 is not that good. It never feels that good, I can tell you that. So something just went down here. I think a Sturm shoots in or a shoots and just lost to the Strafniki. But Light got absolutely pummeled trying to get into the green. Yeah, and Ghost Dragon's thrown away several Pack 40s now. I mean, he's got plenty of them. You know, he's got a B-Face card too, but still. Nazhorn now in. More in, more for support, necessarily, than killing tanks. What's the Tiger see? The Shug? No? Oh, it just seems the Sturm shoots him. Nazhorn could definitely rumble with that Tiger. It just kind of depends on who gets the first shot. Tiger does. 
So that's going to really help. Although the Nazhorn fires faster? Yes, significantly so. Gets the first penetration. Tiger fires again. Lands. Nope, misses again. Now the Stug getting involved. That Tiger's probably going down unless it dodges everything. Pack 40 and Stug 3, though. Finding the side shot, and Tiger goes down. So only one Tiger and one SU-122 left. And then, I mean, Xena's out of 2K then. Like, he has no more 2K anything after that point, which is really quite bad. Xena and Drusha already in. Very early in B-Phase, so he called that in basically immediately. But the Flak looks like it moved a little bit, so it is dodging the Andrusia strike. And on, that Tiger and SU-122 loss is pretty huge. But Glycren moving in to finish off this Strafniki. Shug and Nashorn over here. Very interesting. There's Nashorn Nigel. Where are we going next here? Oh, this is going to hurt. Yeah, and this is the issue with blue side is there's not a lot you can do to hold this flag. Like, if you pile up like this to defend it, then they just drop a whole bunch of Artie on it, and you're, like, completely boned. Like, he's this is going to really, like, hurt. All right, he did fall back immediately, which means more of this stuff will survive than expected. If that first rocket would have landed in the middle of all this, they all would have died. Like, that would have been it. The leader would have definitely died. Ouch. Almost definitely died anyway. OB-25 is going to see all of these when they come out in the open, though, and they're still, they're still probably going to die. Flak spots the Razvedka now. Tries to finish that. Another Alphaclare in this position. And the Razvedka goes down quick. These infantry really pinned down. I'm not sure what happened here. But they're... Oh, the Nebelwerfer strike. He did the Nebelwerfer. These guys fell back, and now they're really pinned. Let's see if these infantry can get on him in time. Stug 3 can't spot him by himself. Sturm shoots and goes down immediately. How many Sturm shoots and does he have? He's got two cards of them, so they should last quite a while. And he's also got the Glykgrens in B. T-70 coming to rumble with the T-26. These guys are still alive? Oh, the OB-25 just happened to slightly miss the line of sight there. Trading shots. Looks like the T-70 is going to win out. Oh, but he left APCR on and the punish. So hard, the punishment. Oh. The Beglite Sturm shoots in combo. I think they'll win out. I mean, the Sturm shoots are going to kind of instantly go down to the SMGs and the Molotov. So it's going to be up to the Beglite. The Beglite will toss a grenade, and that should do it. Unless they get hit by the say, yeah, like I said. Unless the Beglites keep moving. Nope, they did move. They did land the shot. And Tankos go down. Very weak there. Here comes the JU-188 nuke bomber. Is that in the open or at the edge of the woods here? I would assume at the end of the woods. Yes, it's going to land right on there. Ba -ba -boo. Sacrifices his own, shoots in to take all those out. Pioneer Fuhrer is going to die? What is he doing? Yeah, that was a big mistake. Saw that. Yep. Oops. Big oops there. Stug 3 coming in now and IG-33 now. So now he's got the 2K stuff. SU-122 now in. Hitting that pack 40. Ouch. Another pack 40 down. But Glide Grenadiers still trying to finish off this Strafniki, which has held on. These two tanks kind of being wasted over here. I shouldn't say kind of. They are being wasted over here. There we go. Ghost bringing in some more infantry now. I mean, Gina Dong's been doing a nice job of keeping the pressure on. Again, his side's a lot easier to pick up a one flag lead. You know, it's either this one or this one. You can also push the middle town here very realistically. Feels like Ghost Dragon has not concentrated his forces enough to really make a good push in here. He's just sent like one or two units at a time. And that's the problem with 78 Germans. A lot of times that's all you have to push with. Because again, just everything's so expensive. You can see how just how badly shoots in and stuff outperform other infantry. Neville Warfare Strike coming in again. A little early if he was planning for these Beglites to get there, like on the time. 81 with Mortar now in, so we're going to see a little bit more artillery going on. Andrusha getting reloaded. SU-76 going to town here on this T-26. Shoots and do get in. So this area safe for the time being. OB-25 probably finding the shoots in here? Yes. So shoots and going to take a face full. Ooh. First shot. SU-76 takes that out. Nashorn moving in to do some uh, <laughs> HE support. Shoots and do mood. IG-33 now spots the OB-25. 
Misses the first shot. Is he ground attacking? Nope, just missed. 45 mil moving in now, too. So IG-33, though, should really help. It should at least, like, get this OB-25 out of the way so he can start pressuring from the other side of the river here. And there it is. Still 13-11 for Gina, though. Or C phase is coming, so both players will have access to their full cadre of points and units. Both players have a similar depth in their build. One card, one C phase card of infantry. Now, Gina has a C phase card of T34, so I mean that means he will have medium tanks forever and ever. But on the flip side, there are 12 Stugs in Ghost Dragon's deck, so it's not like he's short on Stugs or anything. Just doesn't have that C phase foreverness. Shoots in easily, overwhelming the Strelke out in the open. Stug taking a shot from the 45 mil, but the 45 is out of APCR range, which means that Stug is relatively safe. And along with the shoots in support, it should be very safe. SU-76 is doing a nice job of pressuring now Flak 43s as well. You do want to take those out because then he can access his powerful Air Force again. Flak 43s are very good, though. I'm surprised he brought no 88s, I'll be honest. You don't need them. I'm not even talking for AA because the Flak 43s are phenomenal. I'm just talking like for another 2K unit. So the Beglides got pretty easily forced off. Ghost Dragon continues to just struggle to getting into this flag and he keeps mistiming Nebelwerfer Verfer strikes and stuff. If he timed it better, he could have Neville Verferd and then just walked in and surrendered. But he keeps sending the strike really early and then having his troops walk like 20 minutes across. But Glides here with the support of the Shug should be fine. Strafniki finally goes down, but there's another one already here. Neville for Strike goes off. Lands well and finally forces these infantry off. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan. I talk about it. Every time we see Neville Warfords, you should call in two of them. It's always better. It's just significantly better than one. It's a 3x in performance over their usual performance, which is one of them. And honestly, he should be using this to counter battery out of the Andrusia or some sort of AT gun or the, even the SU-76. Now we see an M15 being used very aggressively. I mean, it does have 50 cals as well, so it's, its damage against infantry can be quite good. And yeah, and big mistake here from Ghost Dragon, not moving his Neville for the punishment coming in. And he left the ammo right next to it, so everything wrong with this picture right now. Can the Andrusia not fail? Wow, the Andrusia failed hard, and Ghost Dragon is not punished for that horrible mistake. This infantry can't decide who to shoot at. The Sturm shoots and doing a nice job of laying down some fire. They've barely taken any damage out because these guys are so stressed. They're not landing very good hits. Boston's still going to get in. Double aisle two now as well. Another Flak 43, but it's pretty far back, honestly. The other IL-2s will get stopped. One might go down, honestly, because there's a lot of flax going on right now. But he's not concentrating fire. He's letting them shoot at whatever they want. Which means these might all get out. Still feel like this IL-2 should go down? Like, my god. Nope, it's going to get away. God, these things are hard to kill. And finally, Ghost Dragon has secured this area. There's still Strelke hiding out here. Could matter later. This three goes down easy. Stug now in position. Big boom there. What was that? Was that an IG-33 from somewhere? Oh, it's, yeah, it's from here. Andrusia going for the Stug? Yep. Andrusia better than the Katusha, but still strikingly disappointing most of the time. Yeah, it's Flak 43 surviving. This Tanko's never got moved since the beginning of the game. So 12-12, but Zina Zhang with a big lead in points. Struggling SVT might be able to just pop out and toss a grenade at this Stug. Has he noticed? Nope. But Glide coming back to try to find this. No, I think he's going to get it. Another Glide gun. No! Oh, what a cheeky play. Flak 43 under pressure again. I mean, he's got nine of them, so I, I don't think there's any immediate pressure on his AA situation. Like he's going to run out or something. 
But it's still always beneficial if you have a big air force to be targeting that AA and just grinding it down slowly. Now the Strelke going to hide out. The Glide coming to get them. So that 20 point Strelke forcing a 30 point investment to try to smoke it out. And it already killed an 80 point tank, so. Not good in the trade department. Flak 43 now down to the Artie. And uh, yeah, I really think it's time for Ghost to retarget his Artie, his Neville efforts to killing this Artie off. Because he will lose, like, if he just gets grounded down. And it's not even good artillery. <laughs> like, let's be real here. It's SU-76s and a singular Andrusia. Like, it's it's not good arty. It's not, like, big Doom stuff or anything like that. SU-122 finding the IG-33 with the Nashorn coming in to try to save the day. And he will. Just his mere presence scaring away the SU-122. These guys finally, like, getting in on the fight, maybe? It's been a lot of points wasted over here in this corner. You could at least put the Nazhorn here to try to hit this reinforcement road. Making good progress here. Might be able to get into the town. But a big line of reinforcements coming in. We have to remember, too, uh, we're in C phase and both players got that 155 points a uh, tick. Off map now coming in, coming in from the Bayo Schwim here. 210. This is a this is a this is a monstrous one. This hurts. This one definitely hurts. He canceled it? Why did he cancel it? It was, I mean, it was very painfully placed. IG-33 doing the big damage. Beglites not moving in yet. Beglites are not good at long range fights like this, so you really should just fall them back. That's the Schutzen's job. Already continuing after the Shug 3. They will kill it at some point. They are not invincible to that sort of thing. You see all three SU-76s did. JU-88, 188 tried to do a nuke bombing, but the ZSU M15 successfully stopped it. Stug 3 finally moving a little bit, but it's already taking a lot of damage. Schutzen doing what they do in overwhelming infantry quite easily. It's 87 infantry and 78 Sherman, 79 infantry in Bazoogly. But remember, he's the Russian player is going to run through infantry a lot faster because they're a lot cheaper than the Sturm Schutzen are. I mean, just the 78 Sturm units. So Ghost Dragon, I mean, looks like his plan is to push here. It looks like this is where he has decided to concentrate. I mean, if he pushes across, he can grab two flags here. So it's not a bad option. Was that Tiger? What was that? Oh, is this SU-76 here? I'm not sure. Oh, did the off map die? No, it's back here. What? Like, why call it in if you're not going to be using it? Hmm. Interesting. Neville Verfer strike now. It's like he called the off map in with the intention of using it on this town, then canceled it and has decided to use every other resource in his pool to try to do what the off map was designed to do. And now the tiger has cut off the reinforcement. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is this going to be three transport kills? Oh, misses the second shot. Looks like no, the big lights going in further. Oh, it doesn't get oh, reloads just in time. Oh, wow. Andrusia going for the Neville Werfer, which wasn't moved again, and he deserved that. That Ghost Dragon deserved the first time, and he loses a Stug. That's insurance for the first time that, that it didn't die. That's two times he left his Neville Werfer in the same spot on a reinforcement road. Sorry, Ghost Dragon. You deserve that one. Can't do that, guys. Move your rocket artillery. Do not put it on reinforcement roads. And believe me, we all do it. I get it. So now we have off map from the other side, 152 here. There is only one 152, and there's two 210s from the other side. There goes the 152. Another Neville Werfer now in. And again, he can move this way up. Like, he could have a way up here and actually have this Neville Werfer be pretty accurate. And Drusia is making the dream work right now. A big push here from Xena. Right now, I just feel like Gina is just outplaying Ghost Dragon on more of a macro level, like just making better overall decisions. Shook 3 takes a pen from the SU-76. Takes another one, but it is still alive. 
It feels like like Ghost Dragon has a superior position, but it's just not actually like making good attacks, and it's just kind of like piecemeal. He's doing what I often do, just trying to send like the bare minimum amount of stuff forward instead of just like really sending a, an attack and like trying to blow an area out. Shoots in trying to stop the tankos from getting any further. IG-33 will stop the tankos from getting any further. Wow, they re fell back just in time. There's not much AT down here other than this Shug 3. So these T-34s are going to be a big issue. This T-26, I guess, as well, technically speaking. IG-18, yes, it has AT heat, but it, it's, would I call it reliable? No. Trap, you can get pinned by the shoots in here. And yeah, Ghost Dragon's... Attack just kind of completely blunted in reverse now. Tiger in a really odd spot here. That's extremely dangerous. Like, all you have to do is walk an infantry across. That tiger is very dead. Shoots in Beglite Pioneer trying to hold off the infantry, but the T-34 is now here. Stug 3 is also here, though. So, the T-34 shouldn't be able to go much further than this. Nashorn as well. Nashorn missed. T26 on the run. Now the Shook 3 gets a pen. T34s are moving though, so it really shouldn't hit. And it definitely won't pen even if it does at this range. Well, I should, it probably won't pen and it definitely shouldn't hit while he's moving. So one T34 goes down there. Gina getting a little too aggressive, I think, here with this just like stab of armor. So more Shook 3s now moving in. Problem for Ghost Dragon is he just hasn't made a good... Like, he could dominate this. There, there's, like, not much 2k left here in Bazoogly. I know he doesn't really know that, but he saw a Tiger and an SU-122 in Phase A. So, I mean, he should at least... I mean, he would I would hope he looked at the opponent's deck. He should know that if he sees those things early, there can't be that much more of it later. T-34 does go down. So that flag's retaken. Neville Warfer wasn't moved again. So Ghost Dragon not learning his lesson. The Glides finally find this Shrelky, my goodness gracious. Black 43. Trying to, oh my goodness, what an Air Force going on here. Boston's IL-2s, there's just too much to stop. This Black 43, I think it's just going to get bombed, honestly. Yep. And finally we see some fighters, the BF-109, but they're, they're the G6s. Why would you bring the G6s? I didn't even notice that. They're awful. Bring the BF-109 G6 R6, like the heavy fighter that actually kills stuff. That's a that's a bad choice. Boston still, two Boston still go down. So that's a pretty costly attack, Air Force-wise. Another flak already being brought in. But uh, Xenier building up his force. And Ghost Dragon making no progress anywhere. Nashorn gets a nice hit on the SU-76. Makes that a little bit weaker for later. Flak 43 coming out into the open again. I think just this position would be better, especially now there's two T-34s. So this Flak 43 is likely going to die. This is, a, yeah, this, is, this is a bad play. Now these infantry have been spotted. Shook 3s need to try to move back in to save the day. Close are they to dead? No, they're not. Shook 3 now in position, but the T-34s are quite close. The second Shook 3 is really what this all hinges on. Gets a penetration. Second one. Takes one out. So one T-34 already down. At this range, it's going to struggle. Not at that range, though. Tiger takes a hit from the Nazhorn here. Nazhorn goes down, though. That didn't... That looked like artillery. Huh. Both T-34 is dead, though. Xena not really using his T-34 super well right now. He's losing them pretty easily. Pack 40 finishes off the Tiger, so all the Tigers are dead. Only one SC-122 over here. But, I mean, despite this, like I said, Ghost Dragon hasn't really taken advantage of his advantages. He's kind of just grinding it out in the places where he doesn't... Like, where he can't use his advantage. Neville Werfer going for it, but there's a second one. He's had this Schwimmwagen with the two tens, and he hasn't called in one off map, so not sure what the point of this was. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm kind of surprised because Ghost Dragon is a good player. This has been somewhat sloppy, honestly. And that's not to say Gina's not a good player. It's just been kind of pretty sloppy play. A lot of units sitting around, missing opportunities and such. Unsupported attacks, not moving stuff after he fires. So we did that, and then what? Like, what's coming? Nothing? Okay, he's at least pushing this forward. Like, I feel like at this point, Ghost, Ghost Dragon's division is definitely, like, the superior division in this situation on Tali. Especially now that most of the 2k is dead. Nashorn might even finish off this SU-122. Just misses its shot. Like, he could definitely get this flag. Like, there's no doubt about it. Infantry moving in. SU-76, too late. Down that goes, and now they move in. Strafniki, though, catching out the shoots in. T26 goes down, shoots in overwhelmed. Strict 3 is in an okay position here. Strict 3 could definitely die to this OB25. What is it, 90? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing lands, it's, it's very dead. Shoots him pinned down from the Strafniki, which is not surprising. Strafniki are in green cover. Big boom there from the IG33 again. Yep. This thing has been doing work. If this thing pushes up too far, yeah, I think the Shook 3 will get it. We'll see, though. It's not like it can run away with that transmission damage. Is this 3 finally in a good position? Like, this, I don't know why he hasn't had an AT gun here the entire game. He could have absolutely creamed all of these reinforcements. This Shook 3 is the first one to engage, actually. Nashorn trying to get away from the Zis 3, but it's going to die. Yeah, and, and again, wow, the T-34 actually pens at max range on the Stug 3. Oof. For that Stug. And Gina Zhang keeping on the pressure. Very nice, because again, I, at this point, I think he's extremely disadvantaged. But I feel like Ghost Dragon's just leaving the door wide open for him. With these unconnected uh, Neville Werfer strikes. I mean, that one at least did something. Like, what was the point of this Neville strike here? To move these two infantry forward and just fall back? Well, Gene, on the other hand, doing a good job of pushing in new places, like trying to capture this flag. I mean, he can hold a 12-12. That's fine. He took a big ticket lead. There's only 15 minutes left now, so all he's got to do is hold. At least Gina's using his off map. <laughs> Maybe Ghost Dragon had a change of morals. He's, he called this in. He's like, no, I won't do this. I can't do this to someone because it's disgusting. Like, look at all these troops here. Like, what What are you doing with these? Like, swing around. Make a big push through here. You can easily win that. Boston instantly forced off by the Flax. Artie will now start firing at said Flax. This three did die to the IG-33, it looks like. Battery Fear, Recon coming in. Oh my god, he finally called in the off map. That's a really slow time. I, I assume it's the normal shot. I can't tell because I don't use them. Black 43, basically at the very edge. He's actually moving it, so like, good for Ghost Dragon for actually microwing and moving his stuff this time. Battery Fear may die in the transport, though. Ooh, that Andrew's strike was close. Yeah. Got unloaded, but he probably just wants to walk it here anyway. Yeah, this off map will actually hurt. T-34 versus Stug, but it is a three-star T-34, so it's going to fire a lot faster. Now, there's the bounce I would have normally expected. And the T-34 goes down, so no armor support for Gina down here. Off map is off here. Has yet to like land in the center of the circle. Yeah, that did not really have the effect I was expecting. I mean, it's 210. It's a big, it's, it's big booms. And that didn't do all that much, honestly. 
An off map of this caliber actually has a chance of killing stuff. And that really just didn't. Shoots and coming in for a fresh push here. Like, like, Ghost has a lot of stuff. And remember, like, so they're, I would say they're kind of equal on map with Ghost with a slight lead in units. His units are better. Like, they're just more expensive and higher quality, generally speaking. So the fact he has more of them on top of that means he's just playing way too passively right now. Like, he's only got 13 minutes to close a really big gap. And getting a 15-9 here is really tough. Like, I mean, he could go one, two, three. Like, these three flags or these two here and this one. That's a viable way. There's nothing down here to fight for. He just has to hold this flag down here. There's no reason to try to, like, make ground. Okay, J188 strike on this singular infantry. Not a great use of that. Again, the off-map should have gone right here. Like, this is where he needs to get in. Or here. Like, this would be phenomenal. Instead, he's calling it down here to now walk troops across at this point. Holy crap. And one of them being a Schutzen. Questions. So many questions. So finally we see an attack coming here. Shoots in unloading way too close to the green here. He's going to lose something in the transport. I would be freaking shocked if he didn't. He did. There we go. T-34 just slightly out of position here. I mean, I can't say it's out of position. It's just in a position to dodge this Stug. This 3 goes down instantly. SU-122 finding this Beglite. That Beglite finally almost captured this flag. Ghost Dragon finally picking up a 1311. Off map coming down on his attack. Stug 3 trying to save the day here. And it kind of is. But Glight, though, is going to lose to the Tankos. And that's a very expensive to lose to a very not expensive unit. This off map's going to hurt. No doubt about that. Plenty of AA here. 37, M15. And yeah, those two squads of infantry, like, why send those at all? JU 188 does go down, so big loss there because he doesn't have many of those. Nashorn moving forward to finally finish off the SU 122. Razvedka did die. IG 33 looks like it got spotted, but the SU 122 is going to go down before getting the second shot off. Now all he needs to do is move an infantry forward to capture this. I think Ghost Dragon has finally realized he's got to get his rear in motion here if he wants any chance. Stug 3, T 34. And the 234 goes down. This is now very open. Of course, he doesn't know that. And the off map is completely blunting any further push. He's got a lot of opportunity now to, like, get into these positions, though. Less than 10 minutes remaining. Ghost Dragon definitely favored on board in terms of, of units and such. But obviously, ticket-wise, Xena is still far ahead. Ghost finally getting a 1311. Uh, Nashorn picking up a kill on the Zis 3 coming down the road here. So a nice kill there. I'm, I'm not sure what this thing is doing. He's walking it? Maybe a mistake? And Drusha coming down. I think there was a flak there. And if there was, it's now gone. More Bostons. And how many of those did he have? Four. So these are the last two. IL 2 is coming in as well. Do we see the BF-109s? Here they come. He's going to lose. He's probably going to lose some of these, honestly. This is kind of like a suicide run just in a desperate attempt to kill something. And he's going for that Boston specifically. Yeah, he's not even going to get a kill on anything. Neville Werfer is just chilling out. They have ammo and stuff. Oh, yeah, plenty. And basically nothing died. Another Giga airstrike forced off with basically no blood except for Ghost Dragon losing a couple units to the Boston Bombers. And again, like, Ghost Dragon's making progress down here, but who cares? There's no flag. Like, he needs, he needs flags. He needs to be getting territory that matters right now. 
He's kind of wasting resources pushing in an area that has no value to him. Now a huge line of reinforcements coming in to make sure he doesn't lose this, uh, Gina doesn't lose this flag. Sapperty will win this fight, Woods fight against the Schutzen. Go try and pick up a 14-10. And Gina right now doing a nice job just having a huge concentration of forces holding these flags. Like, that's all he needs to do is hold flags. Even with seven more minutes, he still wins, I think, on a single t with uh, Ghost Dragon on a single tick. SG-43 spam now. These units just picking random targets right now, whatever has the least suppression. Which you'd ideally be shooting at transports to try to kill those off. Of course they did not. IG-33 now in though. Range to start doing something. Double Stug supporting as well. I mean, he could, I guess, try to push all the way for this flag. So 45 mil here, which is going to run out of HE shell, so that'll be nothing soon. Schutzen should win this because of the difference in suppression right now. 37 mil going after the Stug 3. The Stug 3 has no HE, but the IG-33 certainly does. And down the 37 mil goes. Ghost Dragon still on a 13-11. Now, they're playing with a time limit, which is why we don't see any, like, X minutes to win or whatever. And this reinforcement blob forced off. There's more shoots and pour in. This four is finally cleared out. SG-33 down. IG-33s are the key here. Razvedka goes down as well. I feel like he has more IG-33s. He bought, brought a B-Face card, so he has six. I feel like we should, should just be calling more of those in, like, one here. Set up a Nashorn in IG-33. He would have all this would be his. Even swing up and try to get this one. I feel like Ghost Dragon just too slow right now, moving to, with his advantage. So line of T3476 is coming. This Shook will maybe kill one. I would think then it would get overwhelmed. T34 is just all over the place. Strelke go down. Shoots in here. Should be able to easily kill the Zis 3 once it pokes its head out. Neville Verfer. Okay, did happen to kill an SG-43, I guess. Happened to do some damage to the SG-76s as well. I mean, the T-34s. 1410. Nope, 1311 again. SG-76 taking damage from the Nashorn there. That's a cheeky spot right there. This Ghost Dragon's so close to a 15-9. At a 15-9, I'm not sure if he gets there. We'll see. I, I really don't know. Shoots him down south, easily overwhelmed. Stug 3 is moving in. He's finally grabbed these flags a little bit better. SG-43 is still causing some issues. With that unit dying, he might lose this flag, actually. He needs to move these shoots in forward. Does lose that flag. He needs a 59 consistently if he wants any chance. Razvedka does get spotted, so that goes down. Loses the sight on all these units. Well, the Strafniki probably can still see. I mean, Gina Zhong holding on, and this is what Ghost Dragon should have done 15 minutes ago. He would have had absolute, complete ease of doing this earlier with his 2K assets. It just took him far too long to decide to do that. And Gina's done a good job of keeping pressure on and just enough other places where he's still strong that it's kind of like sucked up resources that Ghost Dragon, I guess, just... Either didn't have the points to do this, or just didn't have the free thought to think about doing it. Thirty-seven mil getting on these shoots in here. Kind of an odd line of sight. Strafniki Gomorotti goes down. See, like he grabbed this. So what? Like it doesn't make a difference. Fifteen nine again, but only less than four minutes left. Oh, fourteen ten. Just kidding. Nothing can stand up to this IG-33 finally in position here. SU-76 goes down to the Nashorn. Nashorn watching down the road to block that off. 16-8 now 
for a Ghost Dragon. Not that it means anything more than 15-9, but the fact is he's got some wiggle room. Stook 3 finding some T-34s to hit. Already got the first shot off. Misses the second. Will this T this shooter killed though for 20 more seconds, so that's out of action. Can the other one land a hit? It does not. One T-34 down. Will the other go down as well? Here comes the airstrike though. Boston's and there's not much AA here. One flak 43 ain't gonna do it. BF 109's trying to respond, but the IL-2 gonna get through. Gonna get his clusters off. Nashorn Nigel goes down. That was the longest I've ever seen him live. Although, let's be real, he was sitting in the back lines. IG-33 gonna die. That's a huge loss there, because that was really that's really doing the work. BF 109 just aren't good enough to kill stuff. Like they really aren't. They don't do enough damage. Especially very good resilience things like these IL-2s and stuff. And now the push forward has begun. Stug 3 now here. Try to do the job. Nashorn's still in position. Plane goes down. Push here in the center. It's getting bogged down. 14-10 still for Ghost. Two minutes left. Xena holding on for dear life. Transport kill here. Just a coincidental thing. T-34 already dead. IG-33 trying to clear out these infantry. <laughs> trying to get in. Sturm shoots and go down. I mean, and, yeah, and Ghost Dragon has had the resources to do this the whole time. So, honestly, really nice job to Gina for holding him off, because I really thought he was done the second that second Tiger and the SU-122 died. Uh, he, I mean, he's just out of 2K at that point, and shoots, and, and uh, Sony H. Jern is just flush with it, so it's like, should have been able to very easily dominate this whole open area. Like, he doesn't even have much 1750. Like, he's basically out of that as well. Yeah, now just 13 level, only one minute remaining. BF-109 was still floating around the back. That gets shot down. My key got stuck. That's not good. Attack power probably needs a new keyboard. The problem is I did get a new keyboard, but it was like a mechanical one. And like those are technically better, but they're really loud. And you can hear them in the recording, and now I can't use it. Kind of a sad face, because it's cool. It's got RG, RGB lighting and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, so yeah, I mean, Ghost got the 15-9 again, but he's going to come up short. 30 seconds left here. Nice work to Gina. Using what I would definitely, I definitely feel was like not uh, the worst division in this situation. Not just like generally speaking, as in worse, it's not as good as 78 Sturm. But I mean, on this map specifically, 78 Sturm, definitely a lot stronger. You just have so many more assets for fighting in this central area and taking this this zone here as 78 Sturm. I think a lot of misuse or not use of these Neville Werfers, like, because he could move these way up. Like, it could be, like, here, and it just he just didn't do it. He just didn't do it this time. 50 minutes, Tali and Tala. Yeah, Ghost Dragon out-traded him by 1,500 kills, too. Like, that's a significant difference. Um... I think a fair bit of that happened in, you know, after C phase, you know, the 10, first 10 minutes of C phase, but it's still, that's, that's not a small difference. There's a lot of points to, to be down and still be winning the game. So yeah, Gina doing a nice job of trading troops for time and holding off the Sturm here. Stug three. Wow. Leaned up, leaned up hard. If you guys enjoyed that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting over on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.